June, right? It's Friday the 19th of June. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and we're here at McClellan Tanker Base. No longer, it hadn't been an Air Force base for a long time. Checking out the latest changes down here at Cal Fire, which has come a long way since the many years ago when I was a kid helping strip the paint off of these O2s as they were coming in off of the boat from the Vietnam War and being pressed into service as spotter airplanes for Cal Fire many, many years ago. Let's go see what some of the latest things are going on with the large expansion of the fleet here at Cal Fire McClellan Tanker Base. Okay, I'm here inside the Cal Fire hangar at McClellan Air Force Base with the latest on the C-130 saga. Let me see if I can get this right. A little confusing. Right outside of here is the U.S. Coast Guard. Cal Fire is working on obtaining seven C-130 air tankers that came from the U.S. Coast Guard via the U.S. Forest Service. So the aircraft are coming from the Coast Guard, then they're going to go... They, they're, they're, then they're going to go to the U.S. Air Force to get a complete Iran inspection. The aircraft will then get tanked up with tanks to turn them into uh, air tanker aircraft, fire bombers, if you will. And then they're going to come over here to CAL FIRE. So these aircraft are not yet tanked. They should hopefully have these aircraft tanked up and ready to operate as tankers by 2021. However, you will start to see these CAL FIRE C-130s flying around the local area, but they won't have tanks in them yet. CAL FIRE is training up their initial cadre of pilots to operate these aircraft. So CAL FIRE is working with the Coast Guard to get an initial cadre of air tanker pilots checked out and qualified for the first time in CAL FIRE history to operate C-130 aircraft. So this is a huge change to the CAL FIRE aerial firefighting program to have C-130s in the fleet. Let's take a closer look at them. Here's the inside of the CAL FIRE C-130s. They still have yet to be tanked up. So they're they're working up the initial cadre of pilots to open up this C-130 bid status, if you will, at CAL FIRE. And they've got the initial cadre is coming from the S-2T rank, so they're initial attack S-2T qualified air tanker pilots, and many of them have prior C-130 time. And they're also attracting C-130 flight engineers from various guard units throughout the United States. In order to attract quality candidates, CAL FIRE is trying to work out a schedule that will allow pilots to commute to this job. In other words, work a bunch of days on with a bunch of days off, enough days off so they can commute out of California. We've got a lot of qualified C-130 pilots all th that live all throughout the western United States but maybe don't want to live in the state of California because of the high cost of living but would be capable of commuting to a job here in the C-130 if they had the, the right schedule with the numbers of days off versus the numbers of days on. So that's one of the many pieces of the puzzle they're trying to put together in getting these C-130s up to speed here at CAL FIRE. So the initial plan is going to be to get four of these aircraft operational here and scattered throughout the state from the Northern California to Southern California, four of the C-130s. They're going to keep two C-130s as spares. 
and one C-130 is going to be continually going through a Iran process or inspect and repair as necessary and it's during this Air Force Iran process where they go through the wing box and zero time the wing box in these C-130 aircraft extending their life as these are H model C-130s. The final tank design should be something on the order of about 3,000 to 4,000 gallons. These aircraft will be initial attack qualified. They will not require a lead plane unlike most C-130 operations today. And so for CAL FIRE to have these as an initial attack aircraft, it'll be much easier for them to make a, to keep a small fire small, attacking it with a larger aircraft. One of the big advantages of this tank system that's going to go on the CAL FIRE C-130s is it'll be a constant flow tank system with doors coming out of the bottom of the aircraft which will give you coverage levels potentially up to coverage level 10, even maybe 12, whereas today most coverage levels, that's the amount of retardant you get per square foot of, of foliage, today most coverage levels, high coverage level numbers would be something on the order of 8. Now, the MAFs C-130s that the Air Force uses, they use, they're called MAFs because they're a modular system that rolls into the back of the aircraft. That modular system can give you a, maybe a coverage level of six or so. So these aircraft will have a considerably higher coverage level capability. The CAL FIRE C-130 program also came with plenty of spares to keep these aircraft airworthy for a long time. Now, if I get this wrong, I'll certainly hear about it in the comment section, especially from a former C-130 guy, but here goes. With the Allison T-56 turbo shaft engines uh, operated with the Hamilton standard props, the engine is running at 100% RPM all the time. And what that means with the Allison engines running at 100% is when you need lift right now, you got it. When you need power right now, you've got it with the... With the uh, with the advancement of the throttles and the change of pitch of the propeller, you are instantly getting more lift over the wing, more power to the engines. Whereas most jet engines or turboprops, you got a bit of lag time. The Allisons are also relatively fuel efficient, so the C-130 can carry nearly six hours of fuel on board, basically a day's worth of fuel. They can work all day without needing to stop to refuel. So your thrust is controlled by the propeller. You couple that with the high lift capability and drag capability of the giant flaps on the C-130, you can slow these aircraft down to 120 knots easily with the drop. Plus the high visibility of all the glass in the front cockpit and the angle heading downhill, you've got plenty of good visibility for low speed, 120 knots, 150 feet above the vegetation with a high coverage level makes the C-130 optimal for air tanker use. Well, we had a lot of fun out here at McClellan Air Tanker Base today with the crews of various aircraft, including the Super Tanker, the MD-80 aircraft, and getting an update on the C-130s. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, and especially to all the patrons over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.